Hey guys and welcome back to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to show you how to create some custom script text in Adobe Illustrator. So let's jump straight in and have a look at how we do this now. Okay so as you can see on screen here this is the finished product of what we're going to aim to create today. So back in Illustrator you can see we have this set up on its own artboard and over to the right hand side we have an artboard that we're going to recreate this on. Now before we do anything you can download this template file from the link in the description below and you can follow along from home. Now it's also worth noting that we are using a font that won't be on your machine by default unless you've installed this already. We can't redistribute this font ourselves but we can show you where to download it so it's completely free and you can get this from dafont.com. So we'll have the link in the description as well of where you can download this. You just need to visit this page, click download on the right hand side and then install it on your machine. So to begin with, I'm just gonna grab my type tool. We already have the font selected up at the top. It's called Fair Prosper. We have this set to 200 point. So I click once, we get our lorem ipsum text and I'm just going to type in the words, flip the script and this is fine to begin with. Now, it's worth noting that when we customize this text, we need to convert this to outlines. So it means we can no longer edit the actual text once we do this. So the first thing I need to do here is right click and click create outlines. So you'll see I can no longer double click on this text and change the characters themselves, but that's fine because this is what we want anyway. I'm going to right click again and ungroup and then I'm just going to group our specific words here. So selecting the first word flip, command G to group. I'll do this with the other two as well. And now I just want to reposition these. So I'm going to bring the word script down here first. And this naturally sits quite well. Each of these words we have a nice space in between flip and script, which is where I'm going to put the word the. And this is really just about creating a bit of balance, looking at where the empty areas are. By default, this font has a nice calligraphy feel to it, so there's not really much I'm going to do to this. However, I'm not a huge fan of the squiggle behind the character of the F here. So what I'm going to do is select this word and I'm going to ungroup it first. And then zooming in on this area, I'm just going to grab my pen tool and I want to just remove this joining section here. So with my pen tool, I'm just going to hover over the path of the F here, and I'm just going to essentially draw a shape over the area that I want to remove. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. We can tweak this afterwards as well. So I'm just going to join this back up. And then with my selection tool, I'll select the F and this new shape go over to my pathfinder and use the minus front option and that's just going to delete this section this is looking a little bit sharp and it looks like we've just deleted this so we'll tidy this up now with our direct selection tool so for a start i want to kind of shorten the lower part of the f here so if i just click and drag over these you can see we have a few anchor points here i'm actually going to remove a few of these just to make this a bit cleaner again we want as few anchor points as possible so you can see that has adjusted the way this looks, but that's fine. Again, we can go back and adjust this some more. Just going to drag this whole section in just by clicking and dragging over all of the anchor points here. And then we can adjust the curve handles as well just to get a slightly nicer flow. So that's okay. I'm not loving the way this flows into the section of the letter F on the right hand side though. So I'm just again with my pen tool selected here. Sometimes it's best to actually click and drag out from one side straight through to the other yes okay, so that will do for now we'll come back to that section potentially afterwards again up here i think the top part of this line just doesn't look quite right so we'll see if we can adjust this slightly what i'm actually going to do is remove this anchor point and we'll add in a new anchor point i press the plus button and then the A key to go back to my direct selection tool and you can see I'm just trying to simplify this area, add a nice flowing curve and see if that helps. Down in this bottom corner I think this is a little bit too sharp this corner so I'm just going to use the corner widget here that's just the little circle appearing inside the corner. I'm just going to drag this up and just round it off slightly and it'll just give it a slightly softer look more in keeping with the rest of the font here. And actually this second part of the F I'm just not a huge fan of in general so what I'm going to do is 
delete the section we actually added in and I'm actually going to remove this whole section. So I'm just selecting these anchor points and hitting delete. Instead, I'm just gonna use my pen tool here and it can be quite tricky to get the look consistent with the rest of the text, especially if you're using a pre-designed font as we are in this case, but really just trying to focus on the flow of the lines, especially things like the thickness and the way the ends of each line look. So in this case, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Okay, so this is almost there. We just need a little bit more width. Okay, so I think that's good enough for this scenario. I'm just going to select the initial character and the new section we've added, and then with my Pathfinder, I'm just going to merge these sections. With my Direct Selection tool, again, I'm just gonna grab the bottom point here because we have a curved area on the left-hand side. I'm just going to slightly mimic this on the opposite side. Top section still isn't that great, so let's make a few more adjustments here. You can see there are just so many anchor points within this, and that's because we've outlined the text. It's not going to be perfectly plotted with anchor points, so that's why often when we're making customizations like this, it's a good chance to actually just go and tidy up the design. Okay, so I think this will do for now. Now, a few other bits within this text that I just want to go in and slightly manipulate the bottom section of the S here. I think this is just looking too square. So with my direct selection tool, selecting both of these corners, again, I can use my corner widget here, pull that in, and I'm just gonna take the bottom side in slightly more, just to give it a slightly more imperfect look. It makes it look a bit more like it's been created with a pen. Again, A on my keyboard for the direct selection tool. Just gonna round off a few more points around here that are just looking a wee bit too sharp. Okay, so this will do for now. What I'm going to do is press V on my keyboard for my normal selection tool. I'll grab all of this and I'm actually just going to hit the merge option in our Pathfinder panel. And this just means all of the overlapping paths will get merged together and it's also grouping the text. Now what I'm going to do is press Command C. I'm just going to copy this. I'm not going to paste anything back in right now, but I am going to go up to my stroke options. I'm just going to add a black stroke and we'll give this a stroke width of about 15 point. Now you can see we're getting some strange little artifacts here going on. I can sort this out if I click on the word stroke up in our control panel and I'm just going to change the caps and corners to be rounded and that's fixed this problem. This can just occur sometimes with strokes if we've got a lot of anchor points and sharp corners you can get that sort of thing happening. I'm just going to select this again and now I just want to expand this so go to object expand and click OK and again with my pathfinder I'm just going to use the unite option here so it's just going to merge all of this together and now I'm going to paste my original text back in place so I'm just going to press command F and that's just going to paste it in the exact place where we copied it from. I'm going to go over to my gradients here and I already have a gradient set up. We'll choose something slightly different for this scenario. So I'll go with a green to blue, grab my gradient tool and I'm just going to drag over this again and that's going to apply the gradient to the text as a whole as opposed to each individual grouping. So this is almost there. What I'm going to do now is grab our black text layer underneath and holding option or alt on a pc on the keyboard i'm just going to click and drag i'm going to hold shift as well and that's just going to lock this to a 45 degree angle move this off slightly so we have a copy of the black text i'm going to select both of them now and we're going to create a blend so to do that i can go up to object blend make and then if i go back into object blend we have blend options remember to click preview i'm going to choose specify distance here so we have a specified distance of four pixels and you can see that's essentially creating a solid looking extruded effect here. Essentially, the smaller the distance, the smoother this will look. So we'll go with six pixels, I'll click OK, and there you have it. We can always adjust the color of the extrusion in behind. If I just double click into our blend mode here, I can select both sections of text that's being blended from and to, and over my properties panel, we can just change the fill color. And double click back out of this and there we go so there you have it a very quick and easy tutorial if you have any questions do let us know down below remember to like the video and subscribe for more content and if you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course visit graphicdesignerpro.com see you next time